for another Facebook Live. Um, we have Barb here again. She may or may not appear on camera, we'll see. Um, I got her some fancy equipment this time, so she's got herself a tripod. So we're gonna try things a little bit differently today. Um, first things first, I have some things to show you guys, a couple of new things added to the website, and of course I have my list of things so I don't forget stuff. Um, the first thing that I just wanted to say is actually kind of a favor, if I could ask of you guys. Um, I notice that a lot of times I get notifications from Facebook that says, you know, so-and-so liked your post, encourage them to, you know, like the page so they don't miss out. If you haven't already, would you please like my page and feel free to share the videos and share any of the information. Um, as a small business, you know, we're all doing the best that we can right now, but it always helps. So you might have some friends out there that so that don't like my page or maybe, you know, some other bag maker friends. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and like my page and um, share. Um, and if you already do, thank you. And thank you to all of you who have still been placing orders. We greatly appreciate that. Because of you, I get to order new stuff. And I have some new stuff to show you today. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you um, is this beautiful part of a collection. It's not a full collection. This is some of Anna Maria Horner's new um, hindsight collection. And it's all on the website. And I just think it's so beautiful, especially for bags. I'm always thinking bags. So check that out. With all these beautiful butterflies and the moths on there. I'm sorry, I'm really cold right now. <laughs> This one, this is the one that got me. I had to have this one. This, I believe, is a reprint from one of her earlier lines that she recolored. So we got those. I keep calling them daisies. I think they're black eyed Susans. Coneflowers. Cone, coneflowers. Cornflower? Coneflower? Cone. Cone. Corn. I believe. We'll go with whatever you guys want to call it. Um, <laughs> there's another colorway. And this one. This one reminds me of highlighters. It's just so bright, but I love it. Barb shaking her head. It's it's highlighter-ish, but it's good. Good highlighter. And then I also got a couple of really big, bold prints. Some nice, I mean, these are big flowers. Just stuff for, you know, for bags and spring, summer, happy colors. So, because in New York, it's almost summer. Because we go from winter to summer, we don't do spring anymore. I guess we didn't sign up for that this year, but that's okay because it is warm. It's just cold in the office. So um, next thing that we got that's new are the teal zippers. All right, got those in the gunmetal, the brass, and the silver. And I just wanted to show you how awesome of a match is that on the teal. Goes really nice with the pearl teal really good um, this is a color I feel like we were really missing for a while and I've been playing around with that I even put it in one of the new kits um, which we'll get there in a second uh, next thing is yeah the kits so because you guys are loving kits and I've been having fun making new samples and uploading new kits I added a few more onto the website I did a new train case uh, a new Voyager kit this was the one that I was working on last week that I showed you guys when I gave you the tip on the handle so it's the black print from Gypsy, my first line, and the pink inside. And this one, the other cotton one has the regular plastic small zipper. This one I did one of our faux metal zippers. So there's that, that's on the website. Um, I did also finish these up from last week. So there's a new trio kit. And what I wanted to show you on this one, I have my large, with the tassel and the medium. And in the pattern, if you have the revised version, I told you that you can skip the corners and keep your bag flat. And that is for the small one or for any of them. So what I did is I didn't make the corners on this one. I kept it nice and flat. So just so you can see what that looks like. So there's no depth on the bottom. I didn't cut those little squares at all. And on the small, I think they're half inch squares. I just kept that like this. I thought that was a cute little change purse, you know, something just small when you don't need the depth to it. So that's how that looks if you do it that way. This one, um, again, has the Andover chambray inside, which is that, pl uh, it's like a blue-green color, really pretty. So that is on the website. And this, I think, is my favorite edition right now. I will have a new one next week, I'm sure. But this is the Emily Mini Messenger bag that I did at a canvas. And I did a flip lock on here in the rose gold and the new blush with rose gold zipper that I just love. And inside of this one, is a little bit of Tula Pink. This was from Pinkerville. 
I believe. So lots of flowers, happy spring. This is on the website, available with and without the pattern. Um, and it's a reasonably priced kit. I think it's $40 without the pattern. So, you know, a nice, quick, easy bag that you can make, not a lot, um, a lot to pay. So that's what's on the website. And last but not least, you guys asked for it. I did it. I don't know if you know this, but the boxy pouch, this one, the tutorial was my first ever video tutorial. I filmed it by myself. Um, I think I did a pretty okay job. I told my husband yesterday there will come a time in the future where I say, oh, I could have done better. But I'm very happy with how it came out. It is on my website. Um, I couldn't upload it to Facebook because it was too large. But I also have a very exciting announcement. I finally, after 8,000 years, behind everybody else, I finally have a YouTube page. So I started a YouTube channel last night. Um, there's Facebook Live videos and then this video on there. I will upload more. I will upload the Facebook live videos that I also save. So if you are not watching this live, it's because I saved it or maybe you're seeing it on YouTube. Um, it's it, it's kind of weird for me because I always said I wanted to do it, but I didn't have time to do it. I didn't think I could do it. Well, now I have time and I figured out how to do it. So I'm going to be uploading some more things. I don't know what. I don't know when. You guys, I love your enthusiasm, but I'm trying to figure out what's going to be next. And as soon as I know, you will know. So this is on there, and I just wanted to show you, because um, we have the kits, what it would look like finished. I posted a picture of this kit when it was all cut out, and I wanted to show you, here's your large, your medium, small, there's those, and then you get one more small. And what I did for this one, again, I didn't cut and box the corners. I kept it flat. It reminds me of those little tissue pouches. You know, just something kind of small, Barb shaking her head again. I'm going to tell you what she's doing every time she does anything. Um, <laughs> but I just thought it was a cute little pouch that you could put in your purse. You got the little swivel hook on here. So just because a pattern tells you to do something doesn't mean you have to do it exactly as is. Your hand sanitizer could fit in there. Oh, your hand sanitizer could go in here. Um, chapstick, girl stuff, you know what I'm talking about. If you need to carry that stuff around, tissues, little flat things. You could even put like a little notepad or whatever in here. But I just thought it was kind of cute. And just to give you an idea of how things look when you don't have the depth on them, you make something nice and flat. It was uh, a little bit quicker, but the same skill level. And one thing I did want to point out, I noted this in the tutorial and I also wrote it in the description on the website. These are not lined. They're, this is just the back of the cork that's used on here. So that's why they go together so quick. And that is also why this is not appropriate for a regular fabric, a canvas or a cotton. That's not going to work on here. Um, a few of you who have been in my classes and have known me from other venues have asked me to do the other boxy pouch, which is the one that's fully lined. It's coming. I can't tell you when, but at some point I am going to work on that because I know you guys want the bigger one and you want to know how to make it lined. I will work on that and I will get that video done um, as soon as I can, but I don't know when. So I love you all, but um, don't message me and ask me when because I don't know when, but I'm going to work on it real soon. So these are made for kind of step one of boxy pouches, just to kind of give you an intro your scraps of cork, your um, thin leather, vinyl, anything that doesn't fray, fine for this. We'll kind of do phase two of boxy pouches in the future where you get to learn the whole step of doing a lining and everything. So I made a bunch of them. Uh, there's the new teal zipper because once you make these, Sue Smith, you said it right, they're addicting. You just can't stop making them. That's our watercolor flowers print with the blush zipper because I am obsessed with it more of our exclusive prints, purple, because I love purple, but I made all of these um, within like the past week. So they're nice and quick and easy, fun gifts or just things to treat yourself. So without further ado, let me look at my list, make sure before I get into any hardware demos, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Let me see what I have. Did I did it all. Okay, so we're gonna get into demos. Now, today I'm gonna demo some hardware. I'm not gonna do all of the hardware, but I'm gonna demo some of the hardware. Next week, we're gonna do some more hardware. So for today's video, I wanna talk about some of the hardware that is in here, okay? I'm gonna show you how you can do a slide set, so if it's in a pattern or if you wanna add it to a bag you already have. I'm gonna show you how to do the flip lock or twist lock. They go in the same way. 
We'll talk a little bit about handmade tags and diva frames. And I just realized I forgot to grab the diva, but I think it's right under the table. So I will get that in a second. So the first thing I want to do is just show you some of the tools that you're going to want to have when you're, um, when you're working on a twist lock or a flip lock. And let's see here, grab all my things. So first things first, here is the difference just so you can see them side by side with your twist lock and your flip lock. I'm going to put this one in today. This has the flip lock, okay, so you can see it's large and it flips up and down, okay. This is the twist lock, sometimes called a turn lock because it does just that, it twists and turns. They go in the same way, they just give you two different looks depending on what style you like on your bag. I get asked a lot which one's easier to put in, they go in the same way. Which one's easier to use? I find that they're both easy, so it's really just a personal choice of what look you like. Um, any of my patterns that say twist lock, because we had those first, you can substitute a flip lock. They have the same components, the oval open side, which has screws on the back, and this part right here, um, which has the prongs. So whichever you're doing, they're going to be installed the same exact way. And today I'm gonna show you. I have a tutorial linked on the website that goes to a blog post that I did with full color pictures, but sometimes it's more fun and easier to see it actually being done in person. So I am going to show you from start to finish. I'm gonna mark this out and show you how to do that. Barb is gonna lean in a little bit, so forgive the shaking if there's any, <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna get right to it. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm ready to put this in, 90% of the time it's gonna be on a flap, like the one that's on the Emily here. So most of the time that's where I'm using it. Some of the patterns you may use it on a different area, but I'm gonna be using this on, um, on a flap. So I went ahead yesterday, I made my flap and I top stitched it. You always wanna have this part of it completely done. This is going to be for the open part. So you wanna have this finished because it's gonna be very hard to sew here. And also that gives us a reference point of where we're going to place the pieces. So, when we're done, it's going to matter which side has fleece. And this side is actually going to be my front, the light blue, because I have fleece on here. Uh, most of the time I do, sometimes I don't. On the road trip bag, for instance, there is no fleece. Um, and sometimes on that one, you're just looking at which print you want on the front. So this is going to be my front. But for right now, kind of like when I tell you when you're putting in a zipper, it doesn't matter where the pull is. For right now, for the marking and cutting, it doesn't matter what side I'm working on. So you work on whatever side you want. First thing we're gonna do is grab a screwdriver. I will tell you sometimes the Diva screwdrivers that we have will work, but they're really, really fine because they're made for Diva screws. Sometimes they don't work for these. So I always have this little set, I think I got it at Home Depot, um, that I always have around. And on your twist lock, on the back here are two screws. And you wanna go ahead and take that out. Don't lose them. If you have a magnetic dish, you can kind of set them in there or you can put them back in the bag. Very important that you don't lose these screws, otherwise it doesn't work so great. So, there's my screws, and there's my two pieces, okay? Mm -hmm. So, here's my back. The back is flat. It has some grooves on one side, but it's flat. It has the screw holes. The front has a lip, if you guys can see that. There's a lip right here, and there's the two um, threaded holes where the screws will go. This we're gonna use later, so I set that aside. You're going to do your markings always with the flat part, okay? Before I can mark anything, I need to find the center of this. So I always have a pin around, and it's very mathematical and technical. You fold it in half, and you find your center. It's as easy as that. If you're super anal, which I know some of you are, sometimes I am, depends on the day, you can go ahead and measure, and sometimes I'll just kind of eyeball it, make sure it looks pretty centered. And I have my pin down here on the finished side you're always working on the side that's already finished because that's where the piece is gonna go. So once I have my center, I take the back and I place it just above my top stitching. The reason is I don't want to cut into my top stitching because I don't want to disturb that. And it's a good reference point. It works really nicely um, to, to place the twist lock. Now in this case, I realize I have a white chalk pencil, so I'm actually gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do it on the blue side because I know it will show better. Again, it doesn't matter where we mark and where we cut because we're making a hole through the entire thing. So once I'm happy with that, it's above my top stitching. 
and it's right in the center. I hold this down and I mark. And I'm marking inside the oval and I'm marking the two little holes where the screws go. Now I don't know if you guys can see this, but what I've done is I've marked inside the oval and those two holes. What I'm gonna do when I cut though, is I'm gonna cut around these little marks. So I'm kind of cutting like a football shape. I'm gonna cut around here. And I'm gonna take my pin out. I'm gonna grab my scissors. You want a nice pair of sharp scissors that have a good point on them. Really, really important for any of your hardware installation. If you have crummy scissors that aren't sharp to the point, it's going to frustrate you and it's not gonna make a clean hole. When you're cutting this, you don't want lots of fraying and threads. So I always keep a nice sharp pair of scissors around. These are the Kai scissors that I told you a couple weeks ago I love. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this. And I just get right in here and I just cut so I can make a uh, start it. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm hoping that you can see this on camera. My scissors are just outside of the line. If I cut inside the line, the hole is gonna to be too small. I want my scissors right here on the outside of the mark that I made with my chalk pencil or your pen. You can mark this with really anything. And I'm gonna cut around. And this is what's nerve wracking. You've made this beautiful flap and now I'm telling you to cut a hole in it, I understand. And all of you at some point are gonna make it way too small because it just feels weird to cut a hole. So if you just keep cutting around those screw holes, around the outside, and when you're done, if you don't see any pen or pencil mark, you're gonna be good. It might not be perfect, we're gonna check it, but at least you have a good start. So now, even though I don't care what's the front or the back, I'm gonna grab the front that has the, um, the ridge on it and set that down. Don't do this in your hands, it's very awkward. Set it on your table and put this over it and when you push, and now I'll try to hold this up for you. When you push that around, you should see the two screw holes and you should see the opening here, nice and clean. I don't have any threads. I, it's not too tight, not too small. It fits nice and snug and I can see exactly where I wanna be. If I have any threads, I can go ahead and trim them. If I have a fabric that frays a lot, like a home deck fabric or some of the, um, lighter weight canvases, anything that really frays a lot, I will grab fray check and I will put a little fray check on here too, but for now I don't need it, um, I'm, so I'm, I'm good. My hole is the right size, everything fits nicely. So now I'm gonna get my glue. And this is the glue that we sell. This is the Guterman, it's probably backwards for you, um, I'm not sure, sometimes it is. But this is the Guterman glue. It's very, very similar to E6000. The main difference on this this has a really fine tip, okay, where the E6000 does not, and this does not glue itself to the cap. I don't know if you've ever used E6000, but I call it a one-time only glue because as soon as I use it, it's done and it glues itself together. This glue does not, this one's been open for quite a while. And a tube of this will last you for a very long time for your hardware. You don't need a ton. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add glue onto the front and I'm gonna put a tiny bit on the back as well. Okay, so, and the glue doesn't dry immediately, so you can put it on there and, you know, get your piece ready. I'm going to take the tip and just kind of squeeze that in there. That's probably a little bit more than I wanted, so I'll just kind of spread that out. Put a little glue in there, and you want to do this on the pieces, a tiny bit on the back, because if you don't, when you are using this piece, this can kind of twist and pop out because the screws go into the hardware, but it doesn't go through your fabric. So there's nothing anchoring this in. If I didn't glue this, I could pop it right out. And we don't want that, especially after all the time and energy we spend on bags. So I'm gonna push my back aside. I've got my front. So that is the front with the ridge up. This is the front of my flap. This is the one that I put some fleece on. So I want my front down. I'm gonna put that on here. I tuck any of those little threads. I can get in there and cut them if I need to. Okay, once that's on there nice and tight, I take the back, try not to make a mess, and I put that right on there, and then I'm gonna put the screws in. 
and you gotta get them really lined up in that hole. There we go. Sometimes it's just a, a smidge. You just gotta move that back over and get those in there. If you have a magnetic screwdriver, that definitely helps. Um, like I said, the Diva screwdrivers are magnetic, but sometimes they're too small for this. And I'm off a little bit, so my screw is not going totally in, but I'll fix that later. And there it is. So it's in there. I gotta fix that screw, don't worry about it. And then there is the front. And now once this glue sets, it's not going anywhere. It's gonna stay put and I can use my bag without any worries. And again, if you're doing a flip lock, it's gonna go in the same exact way. It's just this oval is bigger, okay? So that's probably the harder part because it's a little bit more nerve wracking to be cutting a hole in something. Now for the other piece, this piece right here, this is the twist lock. So this is the part that twists on the flip lock. It's gonna be this part, the big circle. This is going to go into the front of the bag. So on this bag, my pocket is already attached and my front is done when I put this in here. And now when you look at the lining, you can't see anything. It's right back here. So you're gonna do this on your piece before the bag is finished. That way you don't have to see the backside of it and the washer. Plus it can be a little scratchy. So will it hurt anything if you do it last? No, but it's kind of awkward. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna pretend that this is the front of my bag. It's obviously a much smaller piece, um, but what I'm gonna do is I always find my center because my flap is going in the center. So I fold it, I pinch, and I put a pin in. I'm gonna keep this one over here so you can kinda see, cause this is not obviously a front. So on this one again, I found my center, and on this bag, it's down towards the bottom. On a lot of bags, there's gonna be a measurement. So it might tell you measure from the top to you know two inches or three inches, whatever that is. Check your pattern, or if you're kind of making it up as you go, you might wanna test it before you cut any holes. Cause we are gonna cut some little slits, but it's not gonna be a full hole. So we have two pieces left over. There is the twist part, and then there's the washer. All right, and so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pretend that I need this to be an inch up. So let me grab my ruler, which I forgot. All right, sorry about that. So I'm gonna pretend that I need this to be an inch from this side. So I'm gonna use my ruler, and I place one of the lines of the ruler right on the pin, and I take my washer and I butt it up against my ruler. Okay, so whatever measurement you need to use, or if it's down at the bottom, you don't need to use a ruler. So whatever I need here, I butt the washer right up against it right in the center. Again, eyeball or you can measure on each side, whichever makes you feel better. I'm looking and I'm happy with the placement. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark, and break my pencil, there we go. I'm gonna mark in these two slits right here. Now this particular washer, only has two, so I know where to mark. Sometimes you'll get one that has multiple slits. They send us different ones. Um, so just check and see which one this needs before you cut anything or mark anything, especially if you're marking with a pen. Once I have those two marked, I use my seam ripper. So this is my four-in-one seam ripper. You can use the scalpel style, which I use a lot, or you can use a regular seam ripper. And you're gonna put this, I'm gonna do this one first since you can't really see it. You're gonna put this in here and just slide it, okay? I'm just sliding it down. This is nice and sharp in here. If that scares you, what you can do is poke into both of the openings. See how I'm at the top and the bottom? And then slide and then it won't go too far. Once I have that, this piece again has fleece on it. Some of your patterns will and some of them won't. So this is nice and thick and secure. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it through from the front like this. I always check and make sure it looks straight so if I have to um, adjust my openings, I can do that. And on the back here, if I'm working on something that doesn't have fleece, I will often take a scrap of fleece or decor bond and put it in here to add some extra padding. I don't need it for this. I put my washer on and I like to fold my prongs inward. And if that's hard on your fingers, you can use the edge of your scissor to get it started do that or you can use the wooden part of the four in one and just kind of push that down and just like that it's in I've got my front and that's it so they're not that hard to do 
it can just be a little intimidating when you haven't done one before but what I like about this is in the very beginning back when I used to sell bags it, a long long time ago I used a lot of velcro and there's nothing wrong with velcro I am not knocking anybody but this just adds a little something extra it makes this bag look so much more boutique level than just I made this at home where if this had a piece of velcro or a magnetic snap that I couldn't see it wouldn't have that look on it. So I just kind of like adding these because it just makes them a little bit prettier, I think. So that's how you do those. Again, I'll save this video so you can always reference it back, but there is also a tutorial on my, uh, on my website that's on my blog, okay? So that's first thing. And next, I wanna show you a little bit here about how to put in a slide set, okay? So I made some little handle pieces that I'll show you how to use. The great thing about the slide sets, we sell them in three different sizes. There's the half inch, which is great for the small Alice bag. There's the inch, which I use on a lot of things like this one right here. And then there's inch and a half on some of your thicker um, straps. Sometimes your pattern doesn't include this. And so it just has a single strap on it, but you want it to be adjustable. It's not hard to do. You'll need a little extra fabric, okay? Maybe I would plan like an extra strip for a handle. So if you needed, for instance, a four inch strip have two four inch strips that's what this is right here okay because the way it's folded and pressed and you can see I've got plenty of room here I can tighten it I can lengthen it and I have my tab here I'll show you how to make the tab and how to put this on so any bag that you have whether it's mine or someone else's if it doesn't have an adjustable option you can very easily do that so let's go ahead Somebody wants to know if the bag has cork on it. This one, this um, does not have cork. This is all canvas outside and cotton inside. If you wanna do this out of cork, it takes uh, two pieces. It's an 18 by 27 and a nine by 12. And if you go on the website, on the kits and inspiration page, scroll down, it will give you the information on the little changes you'll need to make. This will be cork this will be cork this would actually be a piece of fabric just because it's easier um, and it will be finished and then the entire back and handles and the flap would be out of the cork but i did already do this and um, there is information on the website on how to make that and on the cork you would do the same exact thing so cutting through the cork and adding a twist lock or adding anything to the cork is equally as easy so i don't need any tools for the twist or uh, excuse me for the slide set what I made here I just wanted to show you a couple things I made these real quick so no judging the stitching is is not wonderful and I was using a bobbins so I have a little cork strap right here that I did cork straps always get folded in half so there is a clean edge and a raw edge here but they don't fray so that's great you just fold this in half and you go ahead and do your top stitching this is an inch wide so it started as two inches cork you always start with double the size this is an inch, but it's fabric with interfacing. You can see that in here. This started out as four inches. It gets folded four times. So this would be my tab and this would be my handle. Obviously, yes, I know it's very, very short, but I just kind of wanted to do a quick demo on this. We'll start with the tab. On the tab here, can you see how that's kind of loose? The interfacing is just in the center. There's just a little strip in here and this is all included in the Emily pattern. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea, whenever I use cotton, I don't want to just use the fabric because I need to make sure it has some durability. So there's interfacing in here, but down on the bottom, there's none. And the reason for that is that when we sew this into the bag, that's a lot of interfacing doubled over on top of a bag to sew in. So this reduces some of the bulk. So this tab is four inches. And you can make it longer or shorter. I try not to go too much shorter just because once it's in the bag, you don't want anything hitting while you're trying to top stitch and finish. So this is four inches. I've already um, top stitched it. Not very well, I might add, but that's okay. You guys aren't judging because you're all nice people. So I have this all ready to go and I'm going to use this part of the slide set. This is the rectangle. So you only need two pieces for this entire thing. Here's my rectangle, and all I'm gonna do is slide this on, fold it in half, and I stitch in two places. I stitch down here less than a quarter, and that just keeps my edges together. And if I stitch less than a quarter, when the bag is done, I won't see that stitching. So I just stitch here to close it. 
and then I get as close to the hardware as I can and there's no um, there's no specific measurement for that. If you top stitch up here or down here, as close as you can to try to keep this from flipping and keep it in place. And you can see on here, there is my tab. This started out as the same size and I stitched, I don't know, I'm probably about three quarters of an inch away. It's gonna make it much harder for this to turn and it's also gonna keep this upright so that it works better when you're using it. So that's my tab. It's stitched down here, you can't see, and it's stitched here. And I just stitch across a few times, um, use whatever foot is the most comfortable for you, and just make sure that you backstitch. Always make sure that you backstitch and you lock everything in place. So there is my tab. Then for the handle, I have my handle, whatever length I need it. This again was two, uh, almost two full widths of fabric, um, lengths of fabric. For me, I'm five foot six and this is way long enough for me. So if you are taller than me or shorter than me, that should be fine. You might want to shorten it a little bit if you're on the petite side. If you're super tall, I really don't think you'd need anything longer than this. Um, I like to wear my bags down on my hip and that works just fine. So I have my handle, it's all ready. It goes on for miles, you just can't see it. So down on this end, on this, uh, the one side where the hardware is gonna go, again, there's no interfacing. Very important because of how we're gonna put the slide bar on. On this side, there's interfacing all the way down because it would only be this part sewn into the bag, it will be fine. But we don't want too much thickness here. So what you're gonna do, and the slides that we have, the bar moves, some of the ones that you'll see out there if you're shopping elsewhere, which why would you, um, but I'm just kidding. Um, some of them are fixed, so it doesn't make a difference. I have never found that I have had better luck with one or the other. Ours move and it's totally fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this end here that has no interfacing and I'm gonna bring it up and over the center bar. That's it. So I'm just gonna bring this up and over. And what I do is I slide this until it hits the interfacing. That's a good length for me. I don't need all this fabric here. I don't need a really long piece. This is about, probably about two inches or so I usually do. And then what you're gonna do, now that it's looped over, is you're gonna fold this once, and then you're gonna bring that down, just like that, and that's gonna hide that raw edge. And then you're gonna go ahead and sew right in here. When you're done, the raw edge is hidden. Okay, and I'll show you on here. It's a little hard to see because the bag is completely finished, but right there, I folded this over and then I stitched right there, nice and close to that edge. If you have a lot of excess fabric, you can always trim a little bit or you can stitch twice. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna be more strong. Once I have that sewn in place, and we're gonna try to do this without actually sewing it, we're gonna pretend that that is sewn. I am going to then take this end, okay, this goes through my rectangle ring and then I come back up and over like that. And now I will sew into my bag this end and this end, okay? I don't know who would ever use this, it's very small, but that's okay. <laughs> so this right here is right here. Can you see that? And then this end right here is here Obviously this one's nice and long, and there's my slide. And now I can adjust this to whatever length I want. I can make it shorter, I can make it longer. And this end always needs to move. So that's why this stays loose in the rectangle ring. Okay? So it's actually very simple to do. So again, if you have a pattern and you really wanna make, a, uh, make your strap adjustable, it's just one slide set that you need. On a bag, for instance, like my road trip bag, my big, big overnight bag, which I don't have a sample here to show you, that is done the same way, except it's a removable strap. So on either end, instead of sewing it in place, there's swivel hooks. And it's just so that I can take that off if I want to. Um, and that's something too, if you are rough on your bags, and my mom is probably the guiltiest one, she's super, super rough, and you know that you're gonna go through the handle and you're going to eventually wear it out, you can also put swivel hooks on it to make it removable so that you can just remake the handle and keep using the bag. My philosophy has always been once the bag looks a little worn and torn, it's time for a new one, but some of you really wanna hang on to that fabric and you don't wanna let it go. And I understand. Um, I also wanted to just show you just real quick, if you have a cork handle and you're doing these steps, 
The only thing you're gonna do differently is on this part, you're not gonna fold it twice, okay? So down here where I folded this once and then brought it under with the cork, you're not gonna do that because that would be way too thick. The cork, again, because we can use the raw edge, we just go up and back over. I am all thumbs today, there we go. So it's looped in and then I just bring this down and I stitch right there and it's completely done. Um, actually, I can show you. No, I can't, I lied. I have a sample of a tiding behind the quilt. Um, but the cork is the same exact thing. It's just, you're gonna leave the raw edge. You don't wanna leave the raw edge of the fabric. One quick little tip too, before we go on to the next part. If you're having a problem with this bulk at all, which I don't think that any of you should, I sew on just a regular Janome, the uh, canvas is a little tiny bit heavier, but not. it was not hard on my machine at all. But let's say that you're having just one of those days and you can't get through this. You can fold it once and you can zigzag right here and just kind of make like a, almost a satin stitch and really hold that in place. When you're done and your bag handle is looped over, you really won't notice it. So if you're just, you've had enough and you just can't get your machine to go through it, um, you can just fold it once and do it that way. It's not gonna hurt anything. I've done that in the past. So that is um, the hardware that's on the Emily. Okay, and there's two more things that I want to grab for you. And because I'm dingling, I didn't grab them before the video. So stay right there. I'm coming right back. Nice and quick. Okay, so you've probably seen on a lot of my bags that I put these little handmade tags on. Okay, I did not get a chance to put one on the Emily. I thought about it afterwards, but I would have liked to put it right here. I won't do it now because I would have to go through the flap and I would see the, the ugly part on the back and I like to make this hidden. So again, um, if I'm gonna put this on, I wanna be finished, but not 100% finished. So like on this flap, I can do that because I still have the top open. Or if I'm using, um, making a bag like the Alice bag, you'll see on the website, I put some of them down towards the bottom, some towards the top. You can put the handmade tag anywhere that you want. Um, and we sell these in sets of two in all six colors. So you get two of those and you get two of the washers. And I'll just show you real quick. This is exactly like what we did here for the back side of the twist or flip lock. So again, I'm just going to take, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna find wherever I wanna put it. Okay, I'm gonna put this right here. I mark, and before I mark, I take those prongs and I check and it looks like I need one in from each end. So I'm gonna mark here. You guys are not gonna be able to see this because I'm using a chalk pencil. So I marked in one slit um, from each end. And then I put my hand back through here. I, again, use my seam ripper. All right, and I poke through both ends like that and just slit. You can use scissors for this, but I just find that I'm better with a seam ripper. I find I'm more accurate and less likely to cut through too many layers. Take my handmade tag, put the prongs through, open this up, put the washer on there, and I just go ahead and fold that. I'm not gonna keep this on here, but that is it for that. Nice and simple, easy to put on. And the last thing I wanna talk to you guys about are Diva frames. So. I'm hoping that I'm right, and I have a diva partially made right here. I think I do. Sorry, I was totally unprepared. And I'm a liar. Can I have that diva wallet right there? The embroidered one. Okay, so let's talk about the frames okay this is the diva wallet I know a lot of you have made these there's also the mini divas and there's the prima diva which is the picture that I posted um, yesterday the beautiful one that Jenny made using the rainbow butterfly cork she did an amazing job um, and it was just I love getting emails from you guys showing me what you made I love that she put butterflies in the entire thing it was absolutely gorgeous so if you didn't catch that post it should be right underneath this one so when it comes to the diva frames I'm gonna tell you something that I haven't told a lot of people. These screws, the screws that you guys hate, 
I hate them more. I hate them a hundred million thousand bazillion times more than you do for a couple reasons. Number one, they don't come bagged. We have to do that. Um, I do pay somebody to do that because for some reason she thinks it's fun and that is fine. But we have all been caught up in having to bag these teeny tiny little screws. And it's a nightmare because they are really, really small. And I think that I can get some of these out. So if you are not familiar and you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about, I'm gonna show you. They're like the size of sesame seeds. That is a diva screw, okay? I hate them. I really wish that they would make these frames without screws, but unfortunately it was designed before I made the pattern, so I kind of have to go along with it. And I'm gonna take this off because I just wanna show you. Actually, let me take this side off. I'm gonna show you how to cut the opening. There's two things about this wallet that drive people nuts in the frame. The number one part is cutting the notch. The number two part are the screws. Okay, so we're gonna go over a couple ways that you cannot rip your hair out at home. Okay, so first of all, when you are done with your wallet and the frame is the absolute last thing that you're going to do, your wallet is done, whether it's a diva, a prima diva, a mini diva, everything is put together. This notch right here, you are going to use the frame and the oval part of the frame to mark that notch. However, can you see that that is not an oval? You don't need to cut an oval. If you mark inside, and let me grab, can I have a pen? We're super organized today, don't you worry. Um, a black, or red, red. I'm also very indecisive, apparently. So, I think my hair is too tight. I'm calling this the I gave up look. So, I'm gonna mark on here on this flap just so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So, we're gonna pretend that this right here is the edge of my wallet. I slide this in, okay? And you see how that's kind of a pain going in? Because I didn't sew the edges closed. We'll talk about that in a second. So, I slide this on and I mark like this. And now I have an oval but I'm not gonna cut that. I'm gonna take my nice sharp scissors and I'm going to snip on, just on the outside. Again, we wanna remove the pen. And I snipped a little bit on either side and then I go right across. So, just like that. Get rid of that. Again, if I need fray check, if I feel like I do, I'll use it. What I also do sometimes is take a little bit of my glue and use my pinky and kind of rub the glue in there to keep the hole closed. On the wallet, it's on the zippered side. So if you don't stitch that, your change is gonna poke through and it just kind of becomes a pain when you're trying to use the frame. So I always used to stitch here. And you can see on this one, it's really small, but I stitched here. Now I just use my glue and I rub my glue right across there. And now that my notch is cut, I can slide this back on and check it, okay. And just like that, I don't see anything poking through. I don't have to make it bigger. It's not too large down here. And I think the fear too is that this will happen. When you put your frame on, it looks like that. Just go ahead and trim along here a little bit. You're not gonna hurt anything. This is also why I always recommend that you do it on the zippered side because this is just for change. This is for credit cards. I don't wanna mess with the sizes here, but here it doesn't matter. When I take this and I put this on, and see, I've stitched as close as I possibly can. And I always use those words when I teach and I tell people, stitch as close as you can. And I don't mean a quarter of an inch, I mean literally right on the edge. Keep that, those edges together and you see how much easier that slides on. And now the screws, okay? I do have the Diva screwdrivers which are magnetic, this one is not. But I'm gonna just go ahead and I just, struggle because it's not magnetic. Get in there. I'm getting a magnetic screwdriver. Hold on. This is driving me crazy. Okay. Diva screwdriver. Since it's magnetic, I can pick up my screw if I'm not a total spaz. And okay. So I take this. This one is not magnetized at the moment, but you can fix that by putting it in your magnetic pin dish. And I just put this on here and I just twist my fingers. I'm not cranking my wrist. I'm just very, very gently turning that. And the idea is to get this nice and flush. 
one of two things sometimes happens. Sometimes these holes get drilled a little tiny bit too big. And when I put the screw in, it's not grasping, it's just going all the way in. You can fix that. Sometimes I try to put a screw in and the hole is drilled a tiny bit too small and I can't get the screw to go in. Don't force it if it's too small. All you're gonna do is get it stuck and you're going to strip the top of it because the screwdriver is just going to mangle the top. So what I do is I take like a pair of needle nose pliers, I enlarge it a little bit, and then I put the screw in with some glue. And if the hole is too big, same thing. I take that same glue with that nice fine tip and I will put a little dot in each of those, get the screw in, and I'll also have glue under here. It doesn't matter how the frame is on, as long as the frame stays on. So don't feel defeated if you're having problems with the screws. Basically for me, they're just filling the holes and they're making it look finished. I glue all of my frames. I take this and I put it right in the frame, put a little bit in there, put it on, put the screws in the best that I can and it's done. And my samples get handled way more than anything you will ever use does because of shows and classes and my frames stay on. And that's about it. So that's probably the one thing that I get asked the most is about the Diva screws. So if you lose them, we do sell them separately on the website. Excuse me. Otherwise, um, don't throw out a perfectly good frame just because you can't get the screws to stay in. There's always a way to fix it. I think for today, that's going to be it. Next week, next Friday, we're going to do a part two on hardware. And we're going to talk more about strap hardware. Um, the icicles, the jewels, the strap keepers, some of the other fancier pieces of hardware that don't necessarily close anything, but they add a little extra boing to your bag. So that's what we're going to talk about. If you guys have any questions, remember to email me. You can post a comment here. And if you have ideas for anything that you would like me to talk about on our Facebook Fridays, um, again, send me an email or leave me a comment. Tell me that this is a topic you'd like me to talk about. Um, and I think that's going to be it. So I will check all of your comments and messages and say hi to you all in a bit. I will save the video so you can watch it again later. And I think that's going to be it. Have a great weekend.